good morning. Okay. Um, so, there was a comment about what I'm reading. This is A Lamp Unto My Feet, Daily Reflections on the Old Testament by Lloyd D. Newell and Robert L. Millet. Now, I don't know who Lloyd is, but Robert Millet is um, an LDS professor. I believe he teaches at Brigham Young University, and it's published by Deseret Books. And then the other one that I'm reading out of is Unlocking the Old Testament, a side-by-side -side commentary by Ed J. Pinniger and Richard J. Allen, published by Covenant Communications, which is also an LDS um, publishing company. And Ed J. Pinniger, um, a longtime teacher of early morning seminary and religion classes at Brigham Young University. He also served a part -time, as part-time on the faculty at the Orem Institute of Religion at Utah Valley State College in Orem, Utah, and is a teacher at a senior MTC in Provo, at the senior MTV, MTC. <laughs> He has served a mission as mission president in England and as mission training center in Provo. Um, and then Richard J. Allen, he has served on several high councils in several stake presidencies and as a bishop. Brother Allen's teaching assignments in the church include full-time missionary and gospel doctrine teacher. He has served as a faculty member at both Brigham Young University and John Hopkins University. Um, Richard has also authored and co-authored many articles, manuals, and books. So, um, I don't know if there's concern. I don't know. There was a comment yesterday, the concern about what I'm reading. So, I trust these books. I trust these men who write these books. Um, I trust the publishing companies. Okay. So, today is the 23rd. If you guys have not sent my birthday present or a birthday card, you will be late. My birthday's tomorrow, by the way. It's tomorrow. That's right. All right. And anyone who doesn't send me a present obviously doesn't love me. Just kidding. All right. The 23rd. Um, and Isaac brought her into his mother's Sarah's tent and took Rebecca and she became his wife, and he loved her. Genesis 24, 67. Isaac loved Rebekah. He was not simply possessed of a mystical force, emotional feeling, or biological drive. He made a covenant with her, a new and everlasting covenant of marriage. And his commitment to serve and honor her was one that he would keep all the days of his life. We can be certain that although Isaac was the ultimate presiding officer in his family, he and Rebecca were full partners in raising the family and conducting the business associated with daily living. Later in Genesis 27, we learn of an instance in which Rebecca seems to have been more in tune with the spirit than Isaac when it came to bestowing the birthright upon Jacob. This story is in no way, this story in no way diminishes the greatness of Isaac, but rather demonstrates a working spiritual partnership between a man and his wife who have now ascended to godhood. Okay, so today is Moses chapter 6 verses 57 through 68. And all what's happening here? Enoch is still preaching. Um, he's telling the people to teach the things of God unto their children. Um, yes, so that is where we are at. Um, so they have... Two points that they want to make and then a summary. Um, so the first point is... Verse 58, teach your children. It's because I can't smell or taste. I never know if I have a bloody nose. And so if I feel anything, I got to check. All right. Teach your children has been the clarion call to parents since the beginning of time. 
Here, Adam and Eve were commanded to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation freely to their children. As we note in the dictionary of Noah Webster in 1828, the addition in circulation during the time that Pres Prophet Joseph Smith was translating the Book of Mormon and working on the Pearl of Great Price, the word freely connotes the following. Voluntarily, yet under a moral agent accountable, he, mu he must act freely, plentifully in abundance always, without scruple or reserve, with no doubt or hesitation, <coughs> without impediment or hindrance, with no obstruction or things of life getting in one's way spontaneously anytime there is a teaching moment liberally and generously truth of all things always gratuitously free with no claim of merit or compensation we realize that the word the prophet chose to use to explain the responsibility of teaching truly magnifies the greatest greatest role of parents to love and to teach their children Sometimes I feel like, not that I can't comment on these parenting or marriage things. It's like, well, I have no experience with that. So, um, okay. And then they want to talk about the atonement. So in verse 59, it's talking about Christ, about him being baptized, uh, so on and so forth. The mission of the Savior assures the resurrection for all and opens the way for the obedient and faithful to return to God's presence. As a result of the fall, man became mortal. In this fallen state, it was necessary to provide a way for us to return to the presence of our Heavenly Father. Jesus Christ became our Savior. It was through his blood that we were provided with the way back if we would follow Christ. This is the way and the truth, the ultimate moment of truth in our lives. This is the truth upon which eternal life is founded. The atonement not only brings forgiveness to those who repent, but it also makes possible immortality and eternal life through the resurrection. The power of the atonement illuminates every aspect of our lives as Christ nourishes us and comforts us. He takes upon himself our pains, afflictions, infirmities, and sickness, and in reality succors us in all things. It is the atonement that binds us to Christ through gratitude and and the covenants of his doctrine. The doctrine of Christ includes the first four principles and ordinances of the gospel, which apply the atonement to our lives. The gospel is, in fact, simply this. I came into the world to do the will of the Father, that I might be lifted up upon the cross, that I might draw all men unto me. Yes, the atonement draws us to Christ in every way that we might come back to the presence of our Heavenly Father. I think that was just beautifully spoken. Um, like, I, I can't add upon that. Um, but it wants us to... A uh, summary of precepts and principles. By studying the scriptures, especially the Pearl of Great Price and the words of the Old Testament, prophets such as Moses and Enoch, we gain insight into the matchless gifts of love granted us by our Father in Heaven and His Son, Jesus Christ. For these gifts, we are asked only to bring a broken heart and a contrite spirit. This offering can take a variety of forms in our daily lives. We are uh, promised immortality and eternal life if we will but bring an acceptable offering of obedience before the Lord. We are promised the light of the gospel if we will but follow the prophets and the Holy Spirit. We are promised that we can be a Zion society if we will only but be unified and pure in heart. We are promised the compassion of the atonement if we will show our gratitude and thanksgiving through righteousness. We are given the Holy Scriptures as our guide and asked only to follow them and to keep and share our own book of remembrance with our families and friends. By honoring and obeying the commandments of our Father in Heaven, we can have joy and peace in this life and eternal life in the world to come through the merits and mercy and grace of the Holy Messiah. Again, beautifully spoken. Um, I, 
I loved that bit. I truly loved that bit. I have no comments or, or words. It's it's just a comforting message. It's a comforting message to know that all these things are given to me freely if I but give a proper offering and 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 live righteously. It's a comforting message. It's very comforting. Okay, that was Moses chapter 6, verses 57 through 68, and next week is just Moses 7, so, oh, oh my goodness, okay, so next week is just Moses 7, right, so it's like nine verses a day, so it's going to be really short, but the next week is Genesis 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and Moses 8. That's a chapter a day. So it's going to be packed week after next, but it's going to be scant next week. It's going to be interesting. That's for sure. Thank goodness for our daily reflections or it would be 30 seconds long. All right. I love you all. Today is state conference for us, so we will be staying home. Um, happy Sunday. Talk to you later.